In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captives to sin and do not free ourselves. We have sinned against you in the hot word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We say that your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith, hope, and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to worship on the seventh Sunday of Pentecost. I'm Pastor Joe and it's a blessing to be here with you in this time. A few brief announcements. If you'll look on the board and see our hymn of the day is 975, you'll notice our hymnal does not go up that high. The LCA released a hymnal supplement in 2020, All Creation Sings, and we've been trying to bring in some of those new hymns. It is printed in your bulletin, so fear not. We do have it, even if the red hymnal does not. A few things coming up this Thursday afternoon is our Christ Beloved Community Food Drive. If you are able, please bring non-perishable breakfast items this Thursday afternoon. And then coming up on September 17th, we're hosting a golf tournament. If that's something that's of interest to you as a player or as just someone who likes to come out and have fun, please sign up. More information on that is found in any of our publications. And then just a couple notes about those who've been here in the past. Michael Schulte, who was the intern at the dwelling last year, was ordained yesterday down in Tennessee. He's serving a mission call in Atlanta, so we're thrilled that he is now officially Pastor Michael Schulte. And then also this past week, Athena Thomason Bless, who did her field work here um, and was ordained here, uh, she and Sam welcomed their first child uh, earlier, I believe, on Tuesday, a little little boy named Walter. So keep them in your prayers as they adjust to life as a family of three. Our service continues as we hear God's word. A reading from Isaiah. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst forth in song, and all the trees of the fields shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. from Romans. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin he condemns sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. 
To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give you life to your, to your mortal bodies, also through this spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing." But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Peace to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I'm going to come out and go ahead and do my children's sermon just from right here for today. We've been, over the course of the summer, ex looking at the different pieces of the liturgy, especially at our outdoor service, and why we do them, and uh, kind of what the history of them is. So today we talked about the thing that we do the most in church, and what would you say that that is? <coughs> singing, right. Martin Luther said, when you sing, you pray twice. So we are, in essence, saying quite a few prayers when we sing. And we, we talked about, we have hymns, those are our special kind of songs that we sing in church, and we talked about how singing really gets out the emotions that are in us, sometimes better than what we can say through just words. We have hymns of joy to express to God when we're happy. We have hymns of lament to express to God when we're sad. One of our little friends reminded us that we can sing angry songs, and sure, we have angry songs. But I thought, especially as we're singing a song from our new hymnal, it's important for us to realize that our experience of life changes 
And our hymns change with us so that we can express what's in here to God who always hears and always listens. So as we sing the hymns, listen out. What do you hear? What of it connects with you? What relates to you? Because that, in essence, is us together saying we and our shared humanity can find verse, can find lyric, can find notes that express to God the depths of what it means to be human. So let's pray. Dear God, we give you thanks that you always hear us, but that you especially hear us when we sing. Give us notes and lyrics when we don't have the words to express our emotion to you. Amen. Sir, why are you running? Sir, why are you running? This is the question posed to Forrest Gump as he is preparing to cross the Mississippi River for the fourth time in the 1994 classic movie, Forrest Gump. If you haven't seen it, even though critics are beginning to take a slightly more critical view of it 20 years later, you still should see it. It's a fictional comedy biography about a character with a low IQ but a large heart who's from Alabama and lives during the Vietnam War era. Near the end of the movie, Heartbroken, Forrest decides to start running. Two years into his run, reporters are waiting beside the Mississippi to ask him why he runs. Is it for world peace, the homeless, women's rights, the climate? In one of the greatest lines ever, Forrest responds to the reporters by simply stating, I just felt like running. The 13th chapter of Matthew's Gospel opens quite possibly a few years into Jesus' earthly ministry with many parables, but only one that's explicitly mentioned, one about a sower and seeds. As the man sowed, he seemingly threw seeds indiscriminately across the ground. Some landed on the path, some in the rocks, a few in the weeds, and finally some in the good soil, which we can assume was the intended target all along. Without explanation for the recklessness of the sower scattering, Jesus moves into an interpretation of the parable that relates to the landing spot of the seed as us who are hearing the word of God. Some hear and don't understand, some try and follow, but hardship or wealth pull them away. Finally, some hear and understand, and they are the one to bear fruit 30, 60, even 100 times. Before we get back to our responses of the seed being sown in us and the relationship that Forrest Gump has to this, I'd like to talk about this apparent irresponsibility of the sower for a minute. I feel like you don't have to be a master gardener to understand that when you dig a little hole and plant the seed in it, it stands a much better chance of growing than if you just throw it. I imagine myself following behind this sower, much the same way the reporters chase Forrest, asking, why are you sowing like this, sir? What are you doing? And it would seem at first glance that all the sower could say was shrug, and I just felt like throwing things. Now, I'm apprehensive about the sower's methodology, because after all, that's not how we evangelize in our tradition, not in this day and age. Are we the type to go door to door asking everyone whether they're rocks, weeds, or good soil if they've heard about the good news of Jesus Christ? Stand on street corners? Send letters to the neighborhood? Wasteful. We seem to be the type who are much more likely to agonize over a carefully worded email to a carefully selected group of people in order to cultivate the best results for whatever ministry we're attempting to do in the name of God. Reckless scattering isn't in our repertoire, thank you very much. We don't have the time or resources to base our ministry around the phrase, I just felt like scattering, without doing a lot of surveys to back up our plan. Now, as it happens, we tend to base our theology around our actions and perhaps a result of what it should be. It may not be something we ever confess in a Sunday school class or in a spoken creed, but how often do we assume if we make sure our mission statement contains the perfect verbiage, if we're sure we reference all the right things in sermons or prayers or have all the thank you survey results 
to point us in the direction of the most fertile fields for ministry. How often after we make those plans do we assume that we have created the soil that God will dump seeds into? How often do we assume that we've done all the right things so maybe God will just send us a few extra signs, a few more good jobs than that other church down the street? So we plan. We make nice little rows and expect God to dump seeds only in our rows. But that's not how the sower sows seeds, is it? Over the course of his life, Forrest Gump, but especially over the course of that run across America, affected people in ways he could not have predicted. Crowds followed him. He inadvertently gave wisdom and inspiration to multiple men who share their problems with him on his run, including some we can't say in this, in this place. These are not planned out, survey results-driven actions that change the course of the lives that Forrest is literally running across. These are the actions of a man whose intention is always just to do good, scattering seeds and running because he just felt like it. What if we took just a small page from the Forrest Gump playbook and stopped trying to cultivate where we thought the good seeds would grow And just let God scatter the seeds and see what happens. What if we stop trying to drop seeds in this hole that we've assumed is fertile, but that God hasn't had plans to water since the 1990s? The indiscriminateness of this sower, I believe, shows that God won't give up on any particular patch of ground, even if at first it appears to be rocky or thorny. How many sidewalks have you walked down that have greenery shooting up between the slabs of concrete, proving that even under the level path there is good soil somewhere waiting for a chance to crack through? How often does a field sit unused for years, full of weeds and thorns, only to be surprised by a mission trip group of teenagers who finally pluck those thorns, allowing the next round of seeds to grow? How often do the rocky seeds, seeming to have no roots, no growth one season, They get scorched and withered, but the next year, they surprise us with their resilience and ability to grow again. Maybe it doesn't feel like that happens all that often, but I'd hazard a guess those seeds sprout more than you or I realize. I'd hazard a guess that were Forrest Gump a true biopic, he'd have reached more lives than he could possibly know. And if we stop and realize how our God really works, we'd realize that God continues to indiscriminately and perhaps, in our opinion, wastefully scatter seeds on all types of ground because God is always willing to give us the second chance to turn good soil out of rocks. What does it look like for our ministry to do the same? What does it look like for us to reach out one more time to that person who's always just a bit rockier than we want them to be? What does it look like to take the chance and step off the path into the weeds, praying that God will help us find the way forward? What might it look like for us as a church to scatter God's love indiscriminately without regard of who's worthy of being the good soil? I believe that would look a lot like the ministry of Jesus Christ. And it might even look like the running of Forrest Gump. And when someone asks us, perhaps judgmentally, why are you doing that? I believe it has given us a really great answer. I just felt like scattering God's love. Amen.
living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns and everything in between, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Guide your church, O God, to sow seeds of forgiveness and righteousness. Direct your people to proclaim your love in this place and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Sustain your creation, O God, by sending favorable weather, protecting waterways from pollution and instilling in all people the need to be good stewards. Lord, in your mercy. Maintain peace among all people, O God, and raise up lawyers to work for justice, advocates to speak for the downtrodden, and politicians to work on behalf of the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Heal those who are sick, O God. Guide health care workers to care for those who suffer. Today we lift up Ron Greenwood, Kristen Hill, John Boutwell, Ellie Fedor, Colin Witt, Melissa Braun, Sandy Nicastro, Daphne Hillcastle, Jeff Cole, Phil Williams, Terry Hayworth, Betty Jo Hartman, Colt Cameron, Shirley Yunt, Tommy Napier, Anne Marie Sneed, Susie Walden, and all those we lift up on our lips and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Answer the prayers of those gathered in worship, O God. Protect those who travel, accompany visitors, and nurture our faith. Lord, in your mercy. Inspire us by the faithful departed, O God, examples of your embodied love, whose confidence in the resurrection guides us in living lives worthy of the gospel. Today we remember Danny Comer, Helen Matthews, Kearns Freeze, Reg Cahill, Marion Morgan, Chris Almarini, Nancy Julian, and Clark Comer. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share that peace.
Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. You use us in what we have to do, in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty, merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord. Unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen.